Okay, in this video we're going to have a quick look at some examples of networks and maximum flow, the minimum cut method, and then a couple of past exam questions. So firstly, with the example in the top left-hand corner, we want to identify the maximum flow from vertex V through to vertex U. Sometimes the start and the finish of a network is called the source and the sink, and you'll often see that um, written in some of the exam questions. So just be aware of that. So using the minimum cut method, what we want to do is firstly get a bit of a baseline. So I always start by cutting the start, so cutting off the source from the rest of the graph. And then what we're doing is adding up the edges that are traveling from the source side to the sink side of the graph. So here we've got this edge traveling from V to R, so we count that too. We're cutting off this edge traveling from V to T, so we count the 5. And we've got the edge traveling from V to S, so we count the 3. So in total, that cut would be worth 10. Now, we obviously now have a number we want to beat, because the minimum cut will give us the maximum flow through that network. So again, to give us a baseline, I use the end, so ne next to the sink. We cut off the pathways leading into the sink then we consider these three edges. Travelling from the source side to the sink, we've got the edge R to U, so we count the three. Similarly, the edge T to U is travelling from the source to the sink, so we count that. Here though, this edge U to S is actually travelling from the sink side back across the cut towards the source which means we actually don't count that 4 when we're adding up the value of the cut. So in this case, that particular cut is worth only 5. Our job is then to see, well, can we actually, um, can we beat that value of 5? So looking at our graph, we say, can I cut through anything else that will allow me to get a number less than 5? So let's just clear up some of these. Now look in our graph, see if we can cut through anywhere else on the graph to give us a value smaller than 5. Okay, so you start looking to see, are there any edges that travel back against the flow, like the 4 did from U to S? And we see, can we cut, say, across here? We would get 3 plus 2 plus 4 plus 3. That's not going to give us something smaller. If we cut across this way, I would add the 2, the 1, the 2, and the 4, again, not smaller than a 5. And I basically work my way through until I am happy that I have cut off all possible pathways through and that I'm not going to get a number value smaller than 5. Okay, let's look at the second example. So we're going to follow the same process. Start by cutting off, if this is our source at A, and our sink at E. So let's cut off vertex A. Now all three of those edges run from source across the edge to, to sorry, across the cut to the sink. So I'm going to add the three values. So 4 plus 5 plus 3 gives me 12. Again, let's use our sink edge to a cut there and check if that we can get smaller than 12. And we've got 3 plus 4 plus 6, which actually gives us 13. So at the moment, our smallest number is 12. Now you see here these two edges in the middle between B, C and D are running up the graph. So potentially if we cut through there, we may be able to actually get something less than 12. So again, I'll just clear up some of this so that we can see those a bit better. So now if we try to cut, say, through these edges here, we can see that running from A to D, we count. A to C, we count. But this edge here from C to B is running from the sink side back to the source side, so we don't need to add the 2. And finally, the edge here from B to E, we count the 3. So now we've got a total of 11, so that's slightly smaller than before. A final um, cut that we might try is actually through the bottom under in C, D there. And so this time, again, I would add the 3. The 2, though, from D to C is running from sink side to source, so again, we wouldn't count that edge. Here, the 4 is running from 
sink to source, so we count that. And the edge B to E, again running from sink to source, source to sink, sorry, and would count that. So now I've got actually a cut of 10, which is actually the minimum cut for this graph. So you can see by trying to cut through edges that run opposite to the flow, you're actually able to minimize your cut there, which gives us our maximum flow. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of exam questions. So the diagram here is actually for the next two questions. And it gives you a bit of a spiel. We've got our source at the top, which we can see here, and our sink down in the bottom right-hand corner. And so the first question is actually asking us, what is the capacity of the cut that's shown on the graph? So working our way through from top to bottom, let's consider all of the edges we're cutting through. The 11 is working from the source to the sink, so we're going to add that. This 8, though, is running from the sink side back to the source side, so we're not going to count it. The 5 here is running from the source side through to the sink side, so we do count it. And I know that can be a little bit confusing, so sometimes it's worth thinking about if I start at the source, can I get to the beginning of that edge? If I can, that means I will actually add that 5. So that's another way of thinking about it. And then finally, working from this 7, it is going from source to sink, so I would add that value. So here I've got 11 plus 5 plus 7, so that gives me a total of 23. So my answer is there. The next question, um, which is on the next page, actually asks us for what is the minimum cut, or the maximum, actually asks us for the maximum flow through the graph. So in order to identify that, we have our minimum cut. Now we know that this first cut was worth 23, so that gives us a bit of a baseline. If we work through like we normally would, let's do a cut right at the source there, cut off those two edges. And that gives me a total of 11 plus 8, so 19 for that cut. So already I've beaten that initial value. Again, let's look at the sink. So cut off the sink, and I've got 1 plus 12 plus 7, so 20. So still 19 is my best value so far. And so I start looking at the graph and looking for small numbers, so the small values that I can cut through that will actually give me a minimum cut, or some of the um, edges flowing backwards. So if I was to cut sort of straight through diagonally through the middle here, each of those edges are going from source to sink side, so I add the three values, so I've got 5 plus 2 plus 4, which gives me a total of 11. Now, at this point, it might be worth checking the actual answers because this is a multiple choice question. So if I just flick forward a screen, so we can see here at the moment we have a minimum cut giving us the max flow at 11, but the two other options at 7 and 10 need to be considered. So let's go back to the graph and we'll just see, can we actually get a cut that will give us either 7 or 10? So looking here now, if we actually took a cut, so instead of going through where that 11 does, but actually go up and drop down through this edge of 1. Let's see what that will give us. So again, the 4 goes from source to sink, 2, the 3, and the 1. So in total there, we have a cut of 10, which is one of our options. Looking at the graph, it doesn't seem possible to get a cut of 7. So by just looking at it and working your way through, we can see there isn't a possibility of a cut of 7. So that means our maximum flow does have to be 10. So our final answer, as from the slide, the previous page, would be B, 10.